Hello students, my name is Dr. Salahuddin from Noida Institute of Engineering and Technology Pharmacy Institute, Greater Noida. Today I will discuss about the Taft steric factors, uh, Taft steric parameters and Hange analysis. So, what is the steric factor first? In the steric factors, the bulk size and shape of the drug may have an influence this process means it, it also affects the biological activity. Previously, I have also discussed that the partition coefficient of the substituents, partition coefficient of the molecule, the electronic parameters of the substituents, how it affects the biological activity. So, here in this lecture, I will discuss about how the steric for different steric factors affects the biological activity of the molecule. So, here these bulk size and shape of the drug may have an influence the process. Process means the process of the quantitative structure activity relationship and how easily it can approach and interact with an, with an enzyme or the receptor. So, here the bulky substituents may act like a shield and hinder the ideal interactions. As generally, we observe that the bulky substituents hinders the interactions with the receptor. So, the bulky substituents may help to orientate a drug property for the maximum receptor binding and the increase the activity. And we have to quantify the steric properties of uh, 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 steric properties used in the QSAR and the quantifying the steric property is more dif difficult to quantifying the hydrophobic or the electronic properties as in the previous class that uh, the electronic and the hydrophobic properties of the molecule, how it affects the, uh, the biological activity. So, here we will discuss about the Taft steric factor, the molar refractivity and the Verloop steric uh, parameters. So, Taft steric factor, it is an experiment value based on rate constant and it is denoted with E s. Okay. And next thing is molar refractivity. Molar refractivity is the measure the volume occupied by an atom or the group. Equation include the molecular weight, density and the index of refraction. So, this molar refractivity it is to use the volume occupied by an atom or the group with the help of an equation and this equation include the molecular weight, it includes the density, it includes the index of refraction. Next thing is Verloop steric parameters, it is a computer program and it is used to calculate the bond angle, van der Waal radius and the bond length of the molecule. So, with the help of this Verloop steric parameter that we can observe the bond angle, we can observe the van der Waal radius of the molecule and the bond length also. Now, first is Taft steric factor. So, the Taft steric factor is one of the, uh, of the first steric parameters to be employed was the Taft steric in 19 52, 53. So, what is this Taft steric parameter? So, this parameter was derived 
by measuring the rate of hydrolysis of the certain ester. The rate of hydrolysis of the ester. So, this is the basic uh, basic concept uh, at that time. So, the certain esters the uh, with the help of this stereic factor measuring the rate of hydrolysis and it is a composite reflecting the contribution of the steric strain and the steric hindrance of the motion in 1953. So, that here the E s para electronic uh, taf steric parameters are useful in the preliminary QSAR analysis because they integrate multiple factor and provide uh, global view to its steric attributes. So, here uh, uh, as I have already discussed that uh, the parameters the various types of parameters that we can use in the quantitative act structure activity relationship. So, uh, the steric factors is one of the most important parameters that we can use in our study in we, we can use in the quantitative structure activity relationship. So, here the Taft steric factor how we can measure that we can measure the uh, measure the by comparing the rate of hydrolysis of the substituted aliphatic ester substituted aliphatic ester R C O O R substituted aliphatic ester under acidic condition against the as standard uh, ester. So, we have to take one standard ester and then the derivative of that particular ester and we have to calculate the rate of hydrolysis. Suppose, if we have the 10 uh, molecule and the 10 molecule related with these. So, the rate of hydrolysis we have to calculate all the rate of hydrolysis and make a list which compounds have more values or less values. So, <coughs> we can calculate by measuring this um, by using this formula E s equals to log k x minus k naught. So, k x represent the rate of hydrolysis whenever the x comes we are calling it as the substituted. So, here uh, k x represent the rate of hydrolysis of the substituted ester and k naught represent the rate of hydrolysis of the parent ester. So, the parent ester we have and from this parent ester we develop the different different types of um, different different uh, molecule derived from that parent ester. So, again we have to compare the rate of hydrolysis for the parent ester only. So, here what is the which is limited the substituents which interact sterically with the tetrahedral transition state of the reaction and we cannot used for the substituents which interact with the transition state by the resonance or the hydrogen bonding that we cannot use and may undervalue the steric effects of the group in the intermolecular process that is the drug binding to a receptor. So, here the Taft steric factor that we can uh, observe for example, the unsaturated substituents which are conjugated to the asterisk cannot be measured by this procedure. Suppose, uh, unsaturated substituents which are conjugated to the ester unsaturated substituents that means, the double bonded uh, uh, double bonded uh, substitutes that we cannot calculate that particular substituted ester with the help of this. So, a disadvantage of the steric factor values they are measure intramolecular steric effects where a drug interacts with the target binding sites in the intermolecular manner. So, there is a, uh, we, there is a uh, disadvantage that uh, it is a 
uh, steric factors that we can measure the intermole intramolecular steric factor only. So, where the drug interacts with the direct, so uh, interaction with the target that uh, we can uh, say that it is a intermolecular manner interaction with the target. Next. Okay. So, the molar refractivity, so the molar refractivity is what? It measures the volume, whatever the volume occupied by an atom or group. Here, the measure the volume occupied by an atom or a group of atom. So, the molar refractivity is obtained from the equation. So, the molar refractivity equals to n square minus 1 upon n square minus 2. This is the correction factor used in the mathematics that is n equals to index of refraction into the molecular weight upon density. This will include the uh, defines the volume of the atom or the group of atom, while the n square minus 1 upon n square minus 2 provides the correlation uh, correction factor by defining that how easily the substituent can polarize. This is particularly significant in the substituents have the pi electron or it may have a lone pair of the electron. So, so substituents that we uh, that we are choosing, it may have a lone pair of electron, it may have a pi electron. So, here it can provide a correlation factor in terms of this n square up minus 1 upon n square minus 2. Now, the third thing that is the volume steric parameters. In the volume steric parameter, this is the another approach. I have already discussed the two approach, this is the third approach that is the volume steric parameters and it is a computer program that, is, that means it is a software. So, steric factors involves the computer program, program called sterimol and this sterimol software calculate the steric substituent values that is the volume steric parameters from the standard bond angle. This is very very important bond angles van der Waals radii and the bond length and the last one is the possible conformation for the substituents either the substituents uh, in which conformation uh, is uh, occurring the, the, the substituents or a group of the substituents and here there is a no limitation that is volume steric parameters can be measured for any type of the substituents either it is uh, double bonded or single bonded or the pi uh, pi electron or the lone pair of electron that we can uh, calculate by measuring with the help of this Verloop steric parameters. Now, here I am taking one example, for example, carboxylic acid. So, the carboxylic acid here, this carboxylic acid calculated by the software, the electro uh, 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 steric parameters by sterimol. So, here it will give the dimension of the substituents. Dimension means what? The length and the radius of the molecule. So, length L uh, is the length of the substituents, this is the length of the substituents and B 1 to B 3, uh, B 3, B 4 uh, is the radius of the group interactions. Here B 1 this group C O group, B 2 group C O and C O group this one and O H group B 4. So, here B 1, B 2, B 3, B 4 this these are the radius radii of the group of the different dimensions. 
and here uh, next is the hans analysis so uh, here also i will discuss about the hans analysis so the hans analysis it is uh, discovered uh, hans discovered this analysis in the 1962 so here it's a random drug discovery process and uh, few decades back it is used a random drug discovery process which takes 15 to 20 years to develop a drug candidate and nowadays by applying all these parameters that i have already discussed in the previous classes like uh, uh, substituent hydrophobicity constant the electronic parameters the steric parameters and we can apply or uh, we can do the analysis of all these substituents by using this hans analysis so uh, the huge expenditure was also involved in the drug discovery but nowadays we can adopt it uh, uh, we have already adopted the advanced version of the drug discovery process and we can do the qsr we can do the various types of drug design also drug design tools also and we can use so here that the rational drug discovery approach now uh, uh, whatever we are doing in the today's scenario that is the rational drug discovery and it adopts the various parameters to predict the biological responses with the available literature such as physico chemical parameters not only the all parameters only the important physico chemical parameters that we can take uh, in the in our uh, study now here the discipline of the qsr was initiated by professor corbin hans in the 1962 he laid the foundation of the qsr by three important contribution that is what are the three important contribution by uh, by the hans is what combination of the several physico chemical parameters in one regression equation and definition of the lipophilic parameters also taken the lipophilic parameters and the formulation of the parabolic model for the non linear lipophilicity bioactivity relationship so in the simple situation the biological activity is related to only one such property not all the properties a simple equation can be drawn with the help of hans equation by taking some important uh, physico chemical parameters involved in our uh, drug design and the biological activity of the most drug is related to a combination of the physico chemical properties we can also take the combination of the physico chemical properties in the simple equation only one parameters are relevant but the other parameters are we can kept as a constant uh, if we are taking uh, two or uh, two Uh, three four parameters that uh, it cannot rationalize it cannot quantify the quantification is uh, very 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 uh, complex so that we are taking only one or two parameters for for uh, observing the biological activity or the correlating with the structures uh, co correlating the biological activity with the structures in reality it is not easy to achieve the equation which relate the biological activity to more than one parameters or more are more common so here the hash given an equation and the equation are known as hans equation and they usually could relate the biological activity the main function of this hans analysis is to correlate the biological activity with the physico chemical parameters usually include physico chemical parameters p pi sigma and the steric factors so here 
the hans and fujita combined different physico chemical parameters in one equation so here log 1 by c equals to k1 log p plus k2 sigma so here we are taking the two parameters log p and the sigma value whereas c is the molar concentration that is the biological activity biological activity and k2 k1 k2 k3 are the coefficient determined by least square procedure that we can apply the stats and for in vivo parabolic lipophilicity values is included in the above equation hence it becomes k1 log p square plus k2 log p k3 sigma plus k4 so in the hash equation we will discuss by taking one example one live example for example i am taking here the adrenergic uh, drug adrenergic blocking activity of the 3 halo 3 aryl amine and here there are two physical chemical parameters that is the pi value and the sigma value so the log 1 by c equals to 1.22 sigma 1.59 sigma plus 7.89 so here the pi value is isn't positive here negative so in this uh, series of the compounds that is the 3 halo 3 aryl amines that is aromatic amines so what are the conclusion by defining this equation so the conclusion conclusion is very very important that how this uh, uh, this equation gives what type of uh, the conclusion so here the activity increases if pi if pi is the positive that is hydrophobic substituent pi uh, is positive that is the hydrophobic substituents activity increases if sigma is negative sigma is negative sigma sigma hamet substituent constant the electronic parameters negative that is the electronic electron donating substituents so here in this case that in this case means the series derived from the 3 halo 3 aryl amines when if we want to increase the activity of the compounds then we have to choose the pi value that is the hydrophobic substituents and activity increases if sigma is negative that is the electron donating substituents now in the hash analysis here the uh, next example anti malarial activity of the phenanthrene amino carbinol so here the series of 102 uh, phenanthrene amino carbinols and uh, the, the equation comes in this manner so here minus 0 0.015 so and the log p positive log p square negative and sigma is positive sigma y negative so activity increases as log p value increases log, log p value is the positive so log p value hydrophobicity increases note that the constant is only 0 0.14 so accordingly that we can choose that the the log p value of the the, the log p value of the substituent next is parabolic equation implies an optimum log p naught value for the activity so here the um, in this case the phenanthrene amino carbinols that we can choose the hydrophobic substituent to increase the biological activity activity increases significantly if the hydrophobic substituents are present ring in x and in 
particular ring y. So, here there is two ring x and y. So, here there is one problem also occurs where the substitution present. So, activity increases significantly if the hydrophobic substituents are present in the ring x in this ring only. Now, in the Hansch analysis when carrying out the Hansch analysis it is important to choose the substituents carefully. Carefully means what? So, substituent which uh, suppose I am discovering a molecule uh, like hydrophilic molecule. So, that we have to choose the less uh, less hydrophobic substituents. Okay. So, it is more important to choose the substituents or more important to choose the parameters which type of parameters that we are choosing for the particular biological activity. So, that here by choosing the particular uh, physico chemical parameters the next challenging steps to choose the substituents. So, that here by carrying out a Hansch analysis that we have to choose the various uh, uh, physico chemical parameters the right physico chemical parameters the right substituents. So, here it can be attributed into the particular parameters that the range of values of each physico chemical properties is studied that we have to go the thorough study about the about the parameters about to the uh, about the substituents that we are using and what are the correlation between the biological activity. Suppose, I am taking uh, the hydrophobic values less hydrophobic substituent or more hydrophobic substituents. So, what is the effect of these substituents on the particular uh, moiety particular molecule? So, that the values must be correlated with the different properties that is they must be orthogonal in values. So, at least 5 structures for re, uh, are required for each parameters study. So, here at least uh, the whenever the structure is jab, uh, whenever the structure is more the value is value will be more correct towards the activity. It is so at least 5 structure this is the minimum requirement minimum requirement in Hansch analysis that we can observe the uh, observe the properties observe the parameters by using at least the five structures in or uh, in in the study. So, that here in the uh, in in the Hansch analysis that we can do a particular relationship between uh, we can develop a particular relationship between the biological activity and the, uh, the, the compound. For example, uh, the drug which contain an amine group one of the most frequently carried out studies on amine it is to synthesize the analog containing the homologous series of the alkyl substituents on the nitrogen atom like here that with the help of this methyl C 2 H 5, C 3 S 7, C 4 H 8. These are the very, very, very simple uh, study and if the activity increases with the chain length of the substituents, chain length of the it is due to increasing the hydrophobicity. If the chain length increases of the substituents like methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, so that our uh, hydrophobicity it is it increases with the chain length of the substituent it is due to the increasing hydrophobicity or to increase the size or the both. In the Hansch analysis that we can observe the various types of uh, the substituents that we can take the various types of substituents the various parameters by taking the um, uh, with the help of the literature but which type of substituent like hydrogen methyl ethyl propyl so the value increases and after that 
it decreases. So, in this example, a series of substituents would have to choose the pi value or uh, the molar refractivity and can be uh, correlated. So, the substituents of the hydrogen will be uh, NHCOCS3, iodine, cyanide will be more suitable. This is the reference and thank you so much.